getting a number of emails this morning. Let's open up Belf's mailbag. Email. We get email. We get your email every day. Belf's mailbag. Here's your mail today. I really appreciate your emails. You can email me anytime, greg.belfridge at kelo.com. Greg.belfridge at kelo.com. In regard to this report that I was just talking about, fired up a number of people. Uh, they're, they're responding. And we're talking about the attacks against uh, churches doubling in 2023. And so Family Research Council says there's a growing disdain for Christianity. So let's get to your emails. Harold says, I believe there is a correlation with the push of wokeism and social systems that denigrate and minimalize two-parent uh, two parent families, he said. Stephanie said, you know, um, her take is, that the young generations who have been indoctrinated to believe that anything that sets a standard that must be met before acceptance is discriminatory and thus evil. They see it as exclusionary, non-exclusive, and a rejection of the leftist uh, ideals that they have come to believe are the only acceptable faiths, says Stephanie. Kurt said, regarding the hostility, when a wrong pronoun is considered violence, imagine the animosity growing against Christian values. The left is a violent, unhappy mob. I would bet anger is growing in every segment of society in addition to Christians, he says. And then uh, Darren also sent me an email. Um... He said, when I listen to this line of thought, the thing that comes up in my mind, we're living in a culture today that has a screwed version of the idea of morality. As as you like to say, we're living in bizarro world. What used to be known as right, now being toted as wrong. What was uh, obviously wrong has been toted as right and acceptable. When the church continues to preach the message that it's always preached, that contradicts mindsets and convictions, uh, offenses rise up and we see hatred and distrust toward the church. While not all churches are perfect, we as human beings are not perfect either. Hey, Darren, those are uh, those are great words. So those are emails that just came in the last few minutes. My thanks to all of you for the emails. Feel free to email me anytime, greg.belfridge at kelo.com. I try to watch that email closely, at least as closely as I can. So greg.belfridge at kelo.com. If you would like to uh, drop me, if you would like to drop me an email. Let's go back through some of the other big stories this morning. And and touch on at least the uh, uh, the big news. By the way, that that young man who let him lit himself on on fire. Um, in and shouting "Free Palestine!" Did you hear Fox News reported? He has since now died. He died because of lighting himself on fire. That's been a big story this morning. Uh, also, Donald Trump. I don't, it certainly was not any surprise to me. I don't want to assume what may or may not surprise you, but it certainly was no surprise to me that Donald Trump defeated Nikki Haley in the South Carolina primary on Saturday night. I think what I found amazing, um, there were a couple of things. First of all, the race was called as soon as the polls closed. In other words, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. So the polls closed, boom. Trump was announced as the winner. And what's amazing is uh, numbers have also been released in terms of how much Donald Trump spent in South Carolina. 
versus how much Nikki Haley spent in South Carolina. Did you see she spent sixteen and a half million dollars in South Carolina, her home state? She spent sixteen and a half million dollars. Donald Trump spent one point three million. Um, it's uh, evidence again that you know. Here's the thing: when it comes money doesn't necessarily win elections. Um, and, and we see this uh, happening again. Money certainly can win elections. But, you know, my takeaway from that is it doesn't matter how much money, how many millions you give to a bad candidate they remain a bad candidate. So <laughs> you can pour as many millions on that as you want. It's not going to change the fact that this is a bad candidate, right? And I have thought that's Nikki Haley. I'm not saying she ought to drop out. She ought to get out of the race. I know some were saying that. No, 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 no. Let her, let her. She wants to, hey, if she wants to continue to waste the money of others, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine with me. Uh, she will not be receiving any additional money from AFP Action, Americans for Prosperity, AFP Action. Americans for Prosperity is funded by the Koch brothers. And one of their senior advisors told Fox News that they do not believe that any outside group can make a material difference to widen Haley's path to victory. So so in other words, there is no outside group that can widen her path. (laughs) In other words, she's a loser. I mean, just let's just say what it is. She's a loser. She can lose. And So this staffer said, uh, we will continue to endorse her, but we will focus our resources where we can make the difference, and that's the U.S. Senate and House. So they're not going to, they're no longer be giving money to, to Nikki Haley because they are not going to be, they're not, it's not making a difference. She still got creamed by Trump. I mean, and let's be honest, she got creamed. She was absolutely creamed by Trump. So Trump rolls over her, and now Nikki Haley losing the, and she's not worried about, oh, no, she, she's not worried about the law. Oh, you know, this, this always just makes me laugh because politicians do this. It's not just Nikki Haley. They all do this. They get in, and then they start seeing supporter, you know, big donors dropping out. Oh, no problem, not going to be a problem. Well, and guess what? Then when one person does that, others are like, huh? Pay attention, right? They pay attention. What's going on? So how long will it be? The Haley's got another loss. She's looking ahead now to Super Tuesday and a lot more states. Uh, I don't know that that's going to change. I I don't believe that it will, but we'll see. I, I don't know. Anything could happen. I don't know. I don't know. I just take my best guess. I don't think it will happen. But how long will it be before other? Now you got the this uh, Americans for Prosperity action pulling out. What, you don't think other donors notice? And you don't think they are saying, we might want to reevaluate how we're spending our money and who we're giving our money to, where it would, you know. You got to imagine that those conversations are taking place, don't you? I think you'd be foolish not to. 
And I said earlier this morning, I would love to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> I, would lo- <laughs> I would love to hear the, you know, the conversations taking place out of earshot by, you know, Nikki Haley and her campaign and what's being said then privately, the stuff that they, and I, you know, there are things that you say privately that you don't want to say publicly. But uh, it's just, so again, she outspent Trump by a large margin, 16 and a half million to Trump's 1.3 million, and she still lost. She lost so decisively that they announced the winner as soon as the polls closed. (laughs) Wow. So, Donald Trump, I want to give you Trump's reaction to this. Because uh, Trump said, the the polls closed then at 7 p.m., and Trump said of the speed, He said, this was a little sooner than we anticipated, and even a bigger win than we anticipated, he said. And he also said, I have never seen the Republican Party as united as it is right now, Trump said. That's pretty amazing. Never seen the Republican Party as united as it is right now. So that's Trump's perspective and what Trump is doing here, which I, I really appreciate, is that he's filtering out the noise. He's filtering out the noise. Donald Trump does a remarkably good job at filtering out the noise. Not, not always. Sometimes I get a little... Um, I wish he would do it a little bit more, but... Would you agree with that? Never seen the Republican Party as united as it is right now. I think there is no Republican that I can think of that would be in a better position to understand that and to be able to say that than Donald Trump. And and I just, that, one of the reasons I want to focus on that, it's, I find that uplifting. I think it's incredibly uplifting. There are good things that are going on out there in a sea of troubles, right? Bizarro world. There are still good things that are happening. So Nikki Haley then on Saturday announced she's not going anywhere yet. And she said, what I saw today was South Carolina's frustration with our country's direction. I've seen that sense of frustration nationwide. And she said, This has never been about me or my political future. (laughs) No, no, come on. Come on. Come on, Nikki. Are you never been about you or your political future? Oh, please. I don't believe that for a minute. Do you? (laughs) I just, I hear that she doesn't, and I've told you this before. I thought, boy, she really doesn't understand how her words are being received by people. And when you're running for president, that's kind of, I would think, fatal, right, to your, to the, to your contest. If you're not perceiving um, things um, and how people that you want to vote for you, So this isn't a Democrat trying to appeal to Republicans, right? We're talking about a Republican trying to appeal to her own party, saying it's never been about her or her political future. Really? Really? (laughs) I'm not buying that. No, no, no. You can't sell that to me. And then, you know, she says some things I agree with. She says, we need to beat Joe Biden in November. All right. Okay, I'm on board with that. She said, I don't believe Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden because Trump drives people away. What is it about Trump that drives people away? 
What is it about Trump that drives them away? I think uh, a lot of people there are going to personality, right? Personality. Oh, personality is such. Um, and then I, you go out and you look at the way um, that that he responded. Um, um, and it's, it's where is all of this animosity and this hatefulness and all of this division? I, I'm still looking for it. Where in the hell do people come up with that? I, I, that that's not reality. I think for many of us, was it Bob Costas? I talked about this earlier. Bob Costas, who was, who was um, on Smirconish, and talk, talking about as I had it, but the things that he was he was saying about about Trump. Here it is. This was, he said it several months ago, and now he's repeating it in uh, in another interview. He was on Smirconish on uh, CNN. And um, brought up the issue of Trump. And he said, Donald Trump, he said, he is by far the most disgraceful figure in modern presidential history. He's only become more disgraceful since 2016 and since 2022. He is a bubbling cauldron of loathsome traits. <laughs> Which, when I when I hear that, it's a great line. It's a great line. Uh, improperly applied, but a great line. Um, and then he said this about me, right? He said, you have to be in the throes of some sort of toxic delusion and in a toxic cult to believe that Donald Trump has ever been in any sense emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, or ethically fit to be president of the United States. But his supporters are locked in on that. So in other words, this is what how Bob Costas views those of you who are Trump supporters, that you are in the throes of a toxic delusion, that you are in a toxic cult. (laughs) What? Again, I'm just like, whoa, Bob. I mean, I think you spent way too many years at NBC (laughs) talking politics with the crowd at NBC. Whoa, man. And then he went after Joe Biden, too. He went after Joe Biden, too. He said it's uh, Biden's hubris that's pushing him to run against Trump. Uh, he's a weak candidate rather than stepping aside and letting someone stronger run. So Bob Costa is showing him. Again, it's just the, the – how do people come to these conclusions? I, I can't explain it. Honestly, I can't explain it. I don't know where how they reach these conclusions. It's just uh, it's just crazy. At least to me, I mean, I don't mean they're crazy. I I just think it's a crazy kind of take to uh, have on what it is we what we've seen happen um, in South Carolina over the weekend. There was a great piece this morning by Stephen Cruiser at PJ Media. He does a morning briefing, which, uh, and I take a look at it uh, most days when I have time. The morning briefing, and the headline was, the 2024 Trump train isn't slowing down for anything in its path. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. And he goes on to say, um, <laughs> he's got a great sense of humor. I'm not really convinced that Biden is even fully aware he's running right now. <laughs> but he, he said it as we are all now very aware, the Trump train ignored everything that got in its way, picking up steam or whatever is all the rage for powering metaphorical trains these days. 
and making short work of the nomination race. On Saturday, the Trump train ran right through Nikki Haley's backyard, absolutely destroying any fantasies that, you know, that the the Trump-hating Republicans had about Nikki Haley's chances. So the Trump train plowed the plowed right through all of that. And I thought, well, that's a great analogy. That's a great analogy to what we saw happen in South Carolina over the weekend.